Hey Crafty Fam, it's Alex Van over back with DIY Alex. And in today's tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to apply a few different types of HTV to skinny can coolers that you could find in my DIY Alex mystery box. So I'm gonna give everyone a few moments to jump on and join us. And in the meantime, I am going to share our video over to Facebook so some friends can join us. So as you're joining me, let me know if you can hear me okay and see me okay. And then we will get into the super fun tutorial. I'm excited to show you guys the designs I chose today. I was definitely very adventure inspired and I'll explain that when we get started and why I chose those um, files. I'm super pumped about it though. Hey look, we're live. Good deal, alrighty. I'm just moving some stuff over to Facebook. Sorry guys, Facebook's running a little slow today. I don't know about y'all, but Facebook has been a thorn in my side a bit lately. Not wanting to copy and paste things, just like being real funky. All right. I think we've got it all shared around to all the groups and all that fun stuff. So I'll go back to the video so I can see your all's comments. Hey April, thanks for joining me. She said she can hear me and see me perfectly. Good deal. Hey Laura. Thanks for joining me. All right, we'll give our friends a few more minutes to jump on and then we will get into this little shindig. I'm getting excited, guys. We've gone through a fair number of the projects now. I think I've got another one on Thursday. We're doing a live on um, the 30 ounce white tumbler and how to apply just vinyl to it so you don't have to know how to do epoxy or any of that stuff. We're not gonna do epoxy um, in any of these tutorials, so that'll just be vinyl. And then next week, well, I can't remember what technique I decided. Next week is the one and a half acrylic circle, um, the one and a half inch acrylic circle that's like this big. It's really cute. Um, and I thought about putting vinyl on it. I thought about putting glitter on it. So I'll have to get your guys' input on what you'd rather see. Hey, Crafty Mom and Jay here from Connecticut. Good deal. Thanks for joining me. Hi, Katrina and Evelyn. Good deal. All right, we've got 25 friends with us now. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so if you got the DIY Alex mystery box, then you have everything that you need to do this project. But if you didn't get a mystery box, or if you ever wanna go back and order more materials because you decided you wanna do this project again, you could find everything linked in the description, including the colors that I used. Um, as you guys probably know, most of it is from 143vinyl.com, but um, I also am gonna be using my Easy Press today, which I got from Amazon and stuff like that. So all the materials, like I said, are linked Linked in the description. Ooh, April said bling. April, that is a really good idea. That would be a really fun one. And that's small enough that I could actually handle it. Ooh, you are right, April. We might have to do some rhinestones because I have not ever done rhinestones, I don't think, on YouTube before, but I think you guys would love it. It's really, really fun. Hi, Irma. Happy Tuesday. Thanks for joining me. Okay, cool. Laura said she got her UV resin in the mail today and she's so excited to make the auto coasters now. Good deal, Laura. I'm so excited for you. I don't know that I would put the um, UV resin on the acrylic wine stopper since you've got like the silicone rings at the bottom that go into the wine bottle. So that one's not gonna be as level, but you could do UV resin with the um, car coasters or with the one and a half inch acrylic circle as well. So you've got tons of plans. Michelle said, has it said in that you work from home? Love your videos. Oh, thanks, Michelle. You know, it kind of, some days it does and some days it doesn't um, because I did this kind of stuff before. So it's not like it's totally foreign to me, um, but it definitely is getting a little bit more real now that I've been like a couple of weeks out from having to go anywhere for work every day. So it's definitely getting strange, but I really enjoy it. And honestly, what has kept me sane so far has been going live with you guys because I am a super people-y person. So staying at home all day by myself is just definitely not normally something I would do. So I really like going live with you guys because it gives me a chance to like hang out with you <laughs> and I really like that a lot so thanks for asking though that's it's an exciting time I've got some really exciting stuff coming for you guys I've been talking to some different companies that I'm going to be working with and boy do we have some fun stuff coming so I'm really really getting excited Okay, enough small talk. Let's get on over to this project. I'm just gonna move you guys over to the overhead camera and we are gonna get going and I'm really crooked. Okay, 
All right, so let's start out with our usual. We'll take a look at the packing list from the DIY Alex mystery box, and I'll show you what items we are um, working with today. So we are working with the skinny can cooler that you all should have gotten in Navy. And then I'm using three different types of HTV today. So I am using the electric spearmint, the Caesar um, HTV glitter in champagne glitter, which y'all know is one of my absolute favorites. So fun. And then we're using the Softlex in light gold. So I wanted to show you three different ways to um, work with HTV on these can coolers. And because I didn't have another plan for Softlex, I wanted to make sure to incorporate it a little bit as well, because you guys have already seen me work with Easy Weed. So if you guys want to take a screenshot, if you didn't get a packing list in your um, box, you should have, but you can take a screenshot of this part of the screen right now if you need to see the packing list again. Okay, so let's take a look at the can cooler and all of the parts that I've cut out. So the skinny can cooler obviously holds a little bit of a skinnier can. I'll show you guys what it looks like with a can on it. Um, I have figured out that these like tall seltzer cans, the 12 ounce ones are the ones that seem to fit the best. It also fits like a Red Bull can and some seltzers, um, but it doesn't fit every single kind of seltzer. So the ones that I drink the most often honestly are these um, like non-alcoholic, just carbonated waters and they fit really, really well. So there's not too much of a trick to skinny can coolers. I would say the only thing you wanna pay attention to with these guys is the design, because there definitely is a way to make sure that the design looks like it was made for a skinny can cooler, where it's a lot taller than an average can cooler. It needs a certain kind of design that's gonna look balanced on it. So you wanna go for more of a tall rectangular design, or if it's not naturally that way, then you wanna add in those elements so that it looks really pretty. So I'll show you guys how I've done that in, um, the designs that I chose. So I'll take this back out. I might even drink this today. I, who knows? I haven't decided. <laughs> and I thought I would show you the big pieces of HTV that we're working with also so that you can see them together. So on one side of the can cooler, we're going to be doing the spearmint and the light gold together. I thought it would be fun to do these because I love this metallic shine, but it'll also give you kind of a preview for like what the matte yet metallic look of the soft flex looks like. And then on the other side of the can cooler, we're working with spearmint and champagne gold glitter, which you guys know is one of my ultimate favorites. Um, technically, my two favorite colors of HTV on this planet are um, Caesar glitter champagne. I said that really funky. <laughs> Caesar Champagne Glitter HTV, and then typically it would be Electric Cranberry HTV. But we had to give you guys um, colors that there were enough of to put in every single box, and there wasn't quite enough of the Electric Cranberry to give um, enough sheets out to every single box. So that's why we substituted with Spearmint. But either way, I really love the Electric HTV line, and I think you guys are gonna see that it looks beautiful. So even though you don't get to see my favorite color of Electric HTV, you still get to see it either way. And I just love soft like you guys know that because I've been talking about it a lot recently um, but I just love soft flex I think it's so pretty and I just thought it would look it would be a little bit of cool contrast on one side to have the glitter and then on the other side to have like the metallic um, the metallic gold but like this light gold which is very similar to Vegas gold if you guys have any Vegas gold easy weed obsessed okay so I already have everything all cut out into little tiny pieces so I'll get started weeding all of those and then we can get going Okay, so I told you that I would talk with you about why I chose the type of designs that I chose, and they are all adventure themed because my brain is very stuck in adventure land right now because my husband and I placed an order for a camper last week, and we are so excited to get it. It's going to take several months. It's going to be like four or five months or something by the time we actually get the camper, um, but I am very much like adventure and like camping um, my mind is like busy with a lot of that right now. So that's why I chose these designs. And I think you guys are really going to like them anyway. I kind of kept them general because a lot of the camping ones I don't like quite as much. So I liked the general like adventure themed designs a little bit better. And both of these are from Design Bundles if you guys want to check them out. I did get the compass that I cut the um, Softlex out of from Cricut Design Space, but everything else is from Design Bundles and it's all linked in the description for you. 
So let me know in the comments if any of you guys um, enjoy the outdoors or if you like to camp or anything like that. Um, my husband and I have always been outdoorsy people and we like to camp before, but we are just so stinking excited for this camper, y'all. So, so excited. We've been looking at them for months and talking about it and talking about it. And we finally pulled the trigger. So exciting. Laura says, you will love it. We permanently camp and it is a great getaway. Oh, cool. So you have your camper somewhere and it never leaves. Is that what you're saying? That's super cool. Oh, and I think I have this upside down. I do. <laughs> All righty. That was easy. So here's part of one design. This is going to go with the champagne glitter. Oh, that A is super tiny. Let me grab that little piece. Yeah. Okay. So this first part is the um, electric experiment and it says adventure bound and it's super, super fun. That's super cool, Laura. Where do you keep your camper? If you don't mind me asking, we are planning it. Ours is a relatively small one because if you guys don't know, it's just my husband and I, we don't have any kids yet or anything. And so we got a smaller camper, um, something that my husband's truck can pull, no problem. Um, but it does sleep five so we are definitely um definitely wanted to keep a future family in mind but we also wanted to keep it small so that it was easy and manageable for us to move around and stuff like that so i was actually really impressed with how small all these designs cut absolutely no problem um, if you guys don't know glitter htv is cut is held really tightly to the carrier sheet so you are able to um, do a lot as far as cutting it super intricately and it's going to do a really good job now as you can see that i'm like <laughs> struggling to find these pieces it can be a bear to weed though so you do have to keep that in mind i don't think it's too bad i just kind of fumble for it a little bit um but i wanted to keep it on the simpler side because glitter htv can be such a stinker now one strategy for cutting glitter htv if you are struggling is that you can actually um, flip it over to the back where the cut lines are and if you kind of roll the um, carrier sheet like this it you'll have an easier time finding some of those cut lines because all the places that are cut will start to pop up as you roll the carrier sheet so that's a little pro tip for you Yvonne says, we've had a pool trailer for 20 years, just got a new 2021 Cougar fifth wheel in January, going for our first trip this weekend. That's so exciting, Yvonne. How fun. Congratulations on your new camper. Crafty Mama J said, I'm excited to see that your scrap ball is sticking. I must have tried five surfaces to like one it would stick to. I did not stick to my self-healing mat. That's interesting, Crafty Mama J. I stick mine down really hard and it stays and I literally can't get it up sometimes. In fact, I was just laughing in one of the outtakes of one of my videos recently because I was literally trying to like pull it up and it would not come up. And so the outtakes are really funny. But if I found that if you put a finger underneath the suction to break the suction or suction, it comes off really, really easily. Um, but mine sticks like a crazy person. Oh, also, this is the self-healing mat that I messed up last week. I still have not ordered a new one. I used my easy press directly down on my self-healing mat and forgot to... <laughs> get a um get my Cricut easy press mat and so I uh definitely created a huge bump in it but I have my easy press mat today I still need to order another one <laughs> but I will replace it whoops okay so let me layer the two of these I always like whenever I place my designs I always like to layer them both on top of each other before I place it and that way I just make sure that when I do place it wherever I'm putting it it's going to look good um with both parts so I always like to do that. Lori, your RV is in Michigan. It's a little over an hour away from where we live. How cool. We bought our RV from Michigan. We used Haylet RV. If you're familiar with them, you probably bought it there if you live in Michigan. Cynthia says we RV all the time. We have a toy hauler. I love it. So when you when you get so when we feel up to camping, we just hook up, load food, and head out. That's our plan, Cynthia. That's our hope. We're definitely outdoorsy people. We always have been. And so we're really excited to be able to um, just be able to get away in an easy way because we've done tent camping before and we love tent camping. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just a lot of work, honestly, when uh, with the camper, we can just keep everything we need in the camper. Like that's what we're looking forward to. So super exciting. We, uh, If you guys are camper people, we ordered a 2021 Rockwood Geo Pro 19 bh so it's the bunkhouse it sleeps five so we want to be able to take friends or you know potentially future family and stuff like that so i think it's going to be something that we're going to really really enjoy so 
I will definitely be doing probably more camping accessories and things like this, but stuff like this is a little bit more my style. I don't always necessarily like the our, um, you know, the traditional camping like style, if you will. Um, I like more like modern stuff like this. So this is one side of our um, can cooler, and then these two are gonna go together on the other side. Oh, yep, Laura said that's where we got ours. We live in Ohio, but camp near Coldwater, Michigan. Oh, cool. That's super neat, Laura. Uh, Laura, that's great. Cynthia said, have you tried using parchment paper to ease in lining up the top design? You know what, Cynthia, I have, but that's typically more useful with adhesive vinyl. Since these two layers are already apart, um, it's no problem if you just want to stick one and then the other. But yeah, I totally know what you mean. It's a great, great trick. Oh, Denise, great question. She says, what is the trick to work with a pin pen? The only thing I've learned is to poke myself. I totally know what you mean. Um, I have definitely been there, Denise, and so I will show you. So basically, a lot of people tend to take this, the pin pen and they wanna go straight down and they wanna poke and pull their HTV away, where you wanna think about working with the pin pen more in like a scoop motion like this. And so you're just literally just grabbing the little corner and scooping like that if that makes sense. And it honestly does take a little bit of practice. I won't tell you that you're gonna get it on the first try because you probably won't. It took me a little while too after I converted from using the weeding hook to enjoy using my pin pen. Yvonne said we had a concrete pat on the side of our house so we poured to keep our trailer there. Oh cool Yvonne, that's awesome. Hey Mandy, thanks for joining me. I'm glad you're here. So Denise, let me know if that helps you. When we get into some of these smaller pieces, it might make a little bit more sense. Since I was just grabbing the corner, it wasn't a very good example. But this font is super thin because this is intended to be a little bit of a bigger design, but I just really liked what it said, so I didn't want to retype it. I just wanted to use this file as is. It's super cute. And I also, I'm not going to lie, you guys, as soon as we ordered the camper, I definitely thought about buying a Cricut Joy so that I could take it on the road. <laughs> so let me know if any of you guys do that. I don't know if I'll do that or not, because in some ways, since this is my job, I feel like I need to spend the time when I'm away, like actually being away from crafting just so that I don't get too um, wrapped up in it. But let me know if any of you guys use a Cricut Joy in your camper. Okay, so here's where you're gonna see me use that scoop motion again. I'm kind of coming at my um, HTV from an angle. I know it's probably hard to tell. I would say it's probably like 45 degrees or so off of the um, carrier sheet and I'm just kind of poking it. And I tend to go from the back of my designs. I've seen other people kind of come at the front and pull backwards, but I tend to come from the back of my design and that works really well for me. One thing that's also really good to get in the habit of, which is why the pin pen can save you so much time, is if you can poke multiple pieces at one time. So something like this, if you can pull a couple pieces at once before depositing them, and however you store your scraps, um, it's always a good thing because it just saves you a little bit of time with your weeding. But sometimes they're hard to see or these little pieces run all over the place and I always hate them because I don't want to get any pressed in my design. What's that? Oh, okay, my little E sticking up there. So does that help, Denise? Let me know if that clarifies any of the technique for you. <laughs> Yvonne said she told her hubby last night she needs to take the Cricut with us. I know, and I feel like my maker definitely is probably way too big to take with me. I definitely would do a Cricut Joy for that, for sure. Okay. So I'm gonna flip this over and we're gonna look at it a little closer. I'll show you what it says and I'm gonna double check that I got all the pieces because with a font this small, I wanna be sure to um, make sure that none of the pieces are still in the letters where I can't see them. Okay, this little A is so small. <laughs> I may not be able to get that out of there. That's okay, you can still read what it says even with those little pieces in there. Okay. So let's flip it over. This little saying is so stinking cute. It says, life was meant for good friends and great adventures. And if that is not our motto lately, <laughs> then I don't know what is. So I thought this would be the perfect fit. So on the other side of the skinny can cooler, there's now glitter all over it, which is awesome. <laughs> Probably from our live last week. 
that's going to stick toward the top. And I knew that the spearmint would look beautiful on this navy because I knew that they would pop together. And then I've got just like kind of a general compass design that's going to go at the bottom. So I'll show you guys what that looks like. So this adventure design um, and then these two layers um, are from designs from design bundles. And then this one is from just Cricut Design Space. I'm an Access member, so I'm not sure if this is an Access image or not, but if you just search Compass and Cricut Design Space, you will find it. I just wanted something a little on the planar side, and I'll show you guys why I did that. It goes back to what I was talking about before with the rectangular shape of the um, skinny can cooler. I wanted to make sure to fill up all of my room or, or like visually fill up a little bit more of it because the saying is such a square design i wanted to do a little bit more here i am telling y'all to grab multiple pieces and i just grab one <laughs> it's kind of a bad habit because i usually like to empty one at a time but this also ensures like i said that your little pieces don't flick all over the place because that drives me crazy. Denise said, yes, it does. I was trying to poke it like the Cricut weeding tool. Thank you. You're welcome, Denise. I'm glad it helped because I know it is, definitely is a little bit different. Laura said, my daughter has made a ton of can koozies for camping this year. Oh, yes. She says she'll have to send me photos. Please do. Laura, I would love to see them. Okay, so I'm going to grab the center out of here and then I'm going to grab all the pieces from the middle. Oh, wait a minute. No, no. I grabbed too much, guys. Oh, I see. They're connected to the circle. Okay. I made a boo-boo, friends. Let's see if we can fix it. So I didn't realize that all of these little pieces are connected to the circle. So even though they're cut through, I don't really think that I can pull them out. Because if I do, see how that circle got a little messed up? Let me see what I can do with my tweezers. Hi, Tammy. She said, just came to my craft room and saw you were live, going to design a wedding card for my daughter in June. Well, congratulations to your daughter, Tammy. That's so exciting. If you guys don't know, weddings are really like my jam. Um, that's how I got into my Cricut in the first place. And so if you guys are not a part of my Cricut Brides and Wedding Crafts Facebook group, I highly recommend it if you're planning a wedding for someone or like helping plan a wedding. There's tons of great ideas and it's a fun little community. There's like a little over 10,000 people in my group so far. It's a fun little fun little group. I really enjoy it. And you guys are going to see, I think I've told you that, but you're going to see a lot more wedding tutorials from me because that's kind of, like I said, where my roots are at. And that's something that I'm more interested in going back to. So I'm going to be doing a lot of wedding stuff this year. Oh no, friends. My little design doesn't look as cute as it did before. Hmm. Because now I've messed it up. <laughs> Well, hmm. I'll probably press it anyways because this is just for me and I just want to show you guys what it's like to press Softlex versus other kinds of HTV. But bear in mind, if you use the same compass as me, <laughs> do not pick any of the pieces. Just leave them where they are. Honestly, though, when we go to put the weight of the Easy Press on this, this will probably stick down just fine. Hey, Lindsay, thanks for joining me. Oh, that's a great idea, Melissa. She said, use your X-Acto knife to cut it. You are a genius, Melissa. Nice job. <laughs> Mandy, it is called Cricket Brides and Wedding Crafts. Hey, Barbara. Thanks for joining me. Yeah, I know, Tammy. I may have to cut a new one because I don't really like the way that that looks all by itself. Oh, I don't like it. We may have to cut another one, friends. Okay, so I'll let my Easy Press heat up and we'll do everything else. And then last, I will cut a new one because I don't think I can take it. Like, look at it. It looks messy and I don't like that. I've got to do my first. If I'm going to do all this stuff up for camping, I want to do it right, you know? <laughs> and I've got it saved in Cricut Design Space. So we'll press everything else first. So I'm going to be using my Cricut Easy Press. I'm going to zoom you guys out a little bit so you can see what I'm working with here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my Easy Press and I'm gonna heat it up for glitter first. So under temperature, I'm gonna take it up to 320. Whoops, 320. And that's where we will start. Tammy says, I love Softlex. Agreed, Tammy. Me too, sis, me too. That's one of my favorites. I will put the link to the group, or at least the name of the group, 
in the comments, even though I can barely reach my laptop. <laughs> Cricket brides and wedding crafts. Okay, there you guys go. You can see it. Mandy says, you just ordered your same color. Yay! Exciting. I really like the Easy Press. I am a big fan. I really like it because for quick projects and stuff like this, it's just fun to have something that's so easy to use. You know what I mean? Like, I love my heat press. Y'all know I have the Starcraft Mint heat press, and it's amazing. Um, but for little projects like this, I just don't want to wait, you know, 10 or 15 minutes for my um, press to heat up. I just want to use it and be done with it. So I really like using the Easy Press for that. And in fact, you could probably even use your mini Easy Press if you have one of those. That's just as easy. And yes, Mandy, I waited for the mint one. <laughs> I wanted to make sure to get it in mint because so much of my other stuff is all girly and everything in this craft room. I wanted to make sure. Oh my gosh, you guys, exciting craft room developments. So my spare part from my epoxy cabinet came in. I don't know if you guys follow me over on Instagram, but I've been sharing a lot about my craft room over there. And I got this new cabinet that I was so excited to use with epoxy. And do you know what happened? The first part that I pulled, so, okay, it's a cabinet with two parts. Let me explain that first. So there's a bottom cabinet and then there's a hutch that goes on the top. Well, we assembled the cabinet in one night and that was fine. Andrew, there was like a bazillion pieces and he was not that happy, but he got it together fine because he's magical. And then the next day we went to put the um, hutch together and the first piece we pulled out of the box was broken. Um, and that was so disappointing because I was so excited to get my epoxy station set back up. So I got it from Wayfair and I had to contact Wayfair and wait for another one, which stunk, but I got it. It just came in. So here in a couple days, I'll get that all set up. Okay, guys, I didn't know if I was going to cave, but I'm definitely going to drink this carbonated water because I get so thirsty on lives. <laughs> I actually moved my glass of water. Oh, good. We're already heated. Um, I moved my glass of water over to the other table because I have been so clumsy lately. I have literally spilled everything. I spilled my coffee almost every day last week, and I even put it in a travel mug to have it in my own house, and I still spilled it. So I'm going to keep this way, way far away from all of the crafts because I do not want to mess it up. Okay, so now that we're heated up, we're going to flip it back over and we're going to do the Glitter HTV first because the Glitter HTV um, applies at a higher temperature. So we want to do that first before we do the electric. So we're just going to tack it down for five seconds. So in case you guys have never layered um, HTV before, this is a little lesson in how to do that. Let me zoom y'all in just a little so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put the glitter layer down first and then the electric, since we're gonna do the electric in the second round. I don't know if you guys have to do it like I do, but I literally have to line them up like this because I cannot picture my design without having the whole thing together. If you hear any crazy bubbles, my <laughs> carbonated water is like crazy fizzy. I don't know why. Okay. So I'm going to put my design like there-ish. I think that looks good. So I'm going to hold down the glitter layer and I'm going to peel off the electric HTV so that we can do that in the second layer. And the reason that you have to do this is because um, there are carrier sheets in between each of these layers. So we have to tack each one and then on the last press, which in this case will be the second press, we'll do the full 15 seconds and make sure that it gets all the time that it needs. Laura says tacking scares me. No, Laura, don't be afraid. It's really, really easy. You'll be surprised. It honestly sticks surprisingly easily. Lindsay said she thought she was the only one. She has to do all the lines up as a whole too. I do too. I just can't picture it any other way for some reason. Irma says, looking on Amazon for the pin pen and found one with a refill for $10.99. Irma, you can totally do that if you want to. Um, I have always bought the original pin pen from 143 Vinyl, but absolutely, if you see one on Amazon you want, I totally understand. Okay, so now I'm going to put down my Easy Press mount. I don't know if y'all can see this huge lump. I don't even think you can. There is a huge line from my Easy Press from our live last week. 
<laughs> so I still need to order a new one of these. But this is a Cricut Easy Press mat, which if you have an Easy Press, you basically have to have one of these because it is life changing. So I'm gonna put the um, can cooler down on that, not only for, to protect my table, but also because if you are doing something like a shirt that has like a seam on it that can get in the way, this is really, really helpful for keeping um, the surface elevated pardon me, up enough above the seams so that you can easily um, make sure that your press gets really, really good contact. All right, so we're just gonna tack this for five seconds. So we'll press the little timer button. Whoops, no, count down. <laughs> Go on. What are you doing? Oh, that's right, it's this button, y'all. <laughs> oh, I'm losing it. Okay, so that's a little more than five seconds and my carrier sheet got stuck to my easy press. You know why, guys? You know what I did? I forgot my Teflon sheet that I always tell y'all to use. <laughs> so give me a hot second. Let me go grab my Teflon sheet and I'll be right back. I'm sorry if my microphone makes loud noise. Okay, so case in point for reasons that you want to use a Teflon sheet so that your carrier sheet does not get stuck to the bottom of your Easy Press. Now, it's not going to hurt anything if it gets stuck to your Easy Press, but if that was plain HTV with nothing over top of it, you can end up messing up your design and getting it stuck to the top of the Easy Press. So that's why I recommend having something over top of it. I have a spare Teflon sheet, um, but you can also use parchment paper if you do not have a Teflon sheet. All right. Stephanie said I want to use gold on mine. Also, I've never layered, so this is exciting to watch. Okay, good. Well, I'm glad it's going to help you, Stephanie. Okay, so after you've got the first layer, I tacked a little longer than five seconds, but I only really needed to tack for five seconds. Now I'm going to take my easy press. So we started at 320 degrees. I'll put it underneath the screen so y'all can see. So we started at 320 degrees because that's the temperature that glitter HTV needs to be applied at. So now I'm gonna adjust my temperature down to 305 because that's all that electric HTV needs. So you always wanna go based on, um, you wanna start at the highest temperature and move down to the lower temperatures as you go. So I'll wait for this to go down to 305 and then um, we'll do a full 15 second tack because 305 at 15 seconds is what the electric HTV requires. Laura said, is a Teflon sheet better than parchment paper? Laura, in my opinion, it is. Um, it's not absolutely required, but it does help with even heat distribution. So I like it for that aspect because it does a good job making sure the heat spreads evenly. It's also gonna be a lot more reusable. Obviously with parchment paper, you can use it multiple times, but with a Teflon sheet, I have never, this is one of the first things that I bought when I got my Cricut. It wasn't from 143. I think I just bought this from Amazon, but I have had this over four years and it still looks pretty much perfect. So though, I mean, I guess it just depends on what you have and what you want. I use Teflon and I've always used Teflon, but parchment paper does just fine. All right, so I don't know if you guys heard my easy press beep, but that means it's down to 305. So now that I have the second layer on here, I'm gonna add my Teflon sheet and press at 305 for the full 15 seconds. All right, so we're gonna press the Cricut button and we'll just wait for the timer to count down. Now I know it's really hard to tell, but I am pushing down a bit on my Easy Press. The weight of the Easy Press does some of the pressure, but I also like to press down on it as well. Okay, so now we can just lift straight up, move it off of the Teflon sheet. And now we can peel off the carrier sheet and there's one side of our can cooler. And I probably could have made it a little bit taller. I just went mostly by the width. So here's another thing to keep in mind with the um, skinny can coolers. So the width of the skinny can cooler is about three inches, but I actually only did my designs at two and a quarter inches wide. And the reason that I did that is because when you have it with the can in it, it's gonna be rounded up like this. So you're not gonna be able to see the full thing flat. Whereas obviously when it's laying flat, it looks like there's a gap here. But when it's full, you won't see that gap as much. And I don't like to have to turn my can coolers to read what the saying says. So that's why I make my designs a little bit smaller. 
And the other reason I chose this diamond design is because the way that it's kind of going up and down like this, I knew it would do a better job of covering the surface, um, more so than something like a circle or something like that. Now it obviously still doesn't take up the entire um, space, which is totally fine, but I just like that it goes, I like the direction that it goes and I like the way that it fits in with like the rectangle, if that makes sense. Irma said, so pretty, thank you, thank you. Lindsay said, off topic a little, but I use these can koozies that I have extra of to use as a pressing pillow when I make masks. Ooh, that's a great idea, Lindsay, because this um, most can coolers are made of neoprene and they are amazingly resistant to heat. So that is a really, really cool idea, Lindsay. Thanks for sharing that. Okay, so we're going to go ahead. Oh, I changed my mind, friends. I'm going to cut another one of these before we go ahead and do this design because you guys can see where I messed it up. But I'll show to show you what it looks like and then we'll do everything together. So the life was meant for good friends and great adventures was one file and I added the compass myself and the reason that I did that was to take up more of that rectangular space. I knew if the only thing that I put down here was this saying that it would leave a lot more space open for the can cooler. So that's why I wanted to take it up with the compass like this. But I'm going to pull my laptop into our shot and we're going to recut a new compass just because it looks kind of funky. So I'll switch you guys back up to my face and then we'll do this together. So um, I won't be able to share you share the screen with you guys. I'm hoping very soon to play with my software some more because I'm using the software switcher studio for my lives and I am gonna be able to share my screen with you guys, which I am so excited about. So at some point I'll be able to do the entire tutorial for you guys all like all within Switcher Studio. So I'll be able to show you the screen and then I'll be able to show you all the angles and all that stuff. And I'm so excited for that. I haven't quite gotten there yet, <laughs> but we will get there at some point. Oh, and I don't know if you guys have logged into Design Space today, but they are doing maintenance on Design Space on Thursday night from midnight to 2 a.m. Eastern time. So that would be technically Friday morning. Or wait a minute, you know what? They said the 11th, so I wonder if that's Wednesday night going into Thursday morning. Um, but they are doing maintenance on Design Space again. I'm assuming that they've heard our cries of things being messed up. <laughs> so they're going to go in and fix it. So that will be really, really nice. All right, give me a hot second. My maker is actually over on the floor. <laughs> it's right next to me, but it's on the floor, so I have to bend over to get it. So give me just a second. All right. As you guys can see, I did not plan <laughs> on cutting this with you today. That's why my maker is on the floor. <laughs> but that's all right. Hey, crafters got to do what crafters got to do, right? So I'll show y'all. I'm going to lay my mat right here. And then I'm going to lay my soft flex with the shiny side down. Just like any other HTV. And then I'm going to cut it on the everyday iron on setting because I'm using the Cricut Maker. If you have the Cricut Explore Air 2, you can just move your dial over to the iron on um, setting and that will be just fine. Come on, Design Space. There we go. All right. We're moving now. Sorry about any annoying noise, guys. You guys know if you worked with a cricket that it's kind of loud. <laughs> Hey, Rebecca, absolutely. So the DIY Alex mystery box is something that I offered back in January. And then the way that it works is that I don't start showing you any tutorials until it sells out. And now I am working through the tutorials with you guys. So basically the way that the mystery box worked in this case was that there were 
supplies, which means um, blanks, vinyl, and tools for about six projects. Um, more if you don't use all your HTV, which you typically don't in these projects. So um, you're kind of looking at, you don't necessarily know what's in the box, but since you know that I'm gonna guide you through each of the materials to use in the box, you don't ever have to worry about getting something and not knowing how to use it, if that makes sense. So I can show you the packing list from this past uh, mystery box, but it won't be the same as the next ones that I do in the future. So, and as far as I know, um, all the other affiliates are doing their mystery boxes the same way um, as far as making sure that you're supported with all the tutorials. So that's the nice thing about it because I don't know about y'all, but I hate getting a mystery box full of stuff I don't know what to do with. <laughs> um, sometimes it's fun when it's vinyl and HTV, but especially with blanks, if you don't have any ideas or you don't really know what to use it for, it's not super helpful. So we try to make sure that it's super helpful for you guys. So my machine is done cutting my compass. So let me grab it real quick. All right, and we'll get cooking with this design again. So I'll switch you guys over to my overhead view. Let me know if you have any other specific questions, Rebecca, about the mystery box. Hopefully I answered the basic ones, but I totally understand if you have more questions. All right. So I'm just gonna cut my little compass out of the corner of the sheet. And this is what I mean, you guys, as far as when I say that there's like, when I say that there's more than, or at least six projects in my box, what I mean is I'm showing you how to use this one piece of Softlex HTV, but look how much of your sheet is still left. So even though you may not use it necessarily on the materials in the box, you still have a ton of um, room for um, using this stuff with other projects. Um, Rebecca, I don't know when another one will be offered exactly. I know that 143 Vinyl is offering multiple projects or multiple boxes with their affiliates. I don't know when I'm gonna offer one next, but I definitely will offer another one. And the last one we did was a $50 box with free shipping. And I think that's the price point that I'm probably gonna stick to for the future because I think it's a good, healthy price point for you guys. I'm able to get a lot of stuff in your box, but it's not super, super expensive. So actually, while we're here, guys, if you got a mystery box, let me know what you thought about the $50 box. Um, let me know what you thought about that price point as far as like the materials you got and all that kind of stuff. All right, sorry guys, I had to move my laptop out of the way. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna set this aside, but you guys let me know what you think about that because I would be curious to hear more about it if you guys wanna do another $50 box or if you wanna do more or less. And I'll be honest with you, from an internal perspective, the reason that we chose $50 is because you get that free shipping with it. Um, if we did say a $40 box, then we would probably have to charge the $6.95 flat rate shipping and then that would bring it up you know, a few dollars. So I think $50 in free shipping is really reasonable, but I'd be happy to hear what you guys think about it as well. And um, Rebecca, if you want to do this project or any of the projects from my mystery box, you can find everything linked in the description of this video. So if you specifically want to make can coolers, you can find everything I'm using in the description of the video, even if you didn't get a mystery box. So feel free to grab that if you'd like to do that. And I did the same thing with all my other tutorials as well. All right, so I think with this one, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave all of the internal pieces solid. Even though there is like a cut in between them, I think I'm gonna leave it. Just because the lines are so thin, I'd rather have them be a little bit more solid. So if that doesn't make sense, hold on. <laughs> I'll show you guys what I mean. So I don't know if you can see the cuts in this um, file. You kind of can in the light there a little bit. There are cuts there, but I'm gonna go ahead and leave this alone because I want this to stay nice and solid. Irma says, mystery box from Cricut. So Irma, this is materials from the mystery box that I did for DIY Alex through 143 Vinyl. So this is different from a mystery box from um, Cricut. But there are Cricut mystery boxes as well, but Cricut mystery boxes are a little more like the traditional mystery boxes in some ways. Sometimes you find out what's in them. Um, the other benefit, 
or you, sometimes you find out what's in them before you receive them because a lot of times if you watch any of their Cricut influencers, they'll tell you what's going to be in the box. But that's another way that you can collect Cricut cuties. So if you guys are interested in collecting any of those, typically the best way to get them is through the Cricut mystery boxes. But in this case, these were 143 vinyl mystery boxes. Mandy said, it was a good price point and lots of fun things, great colors. Okay, good, Mandy. I'm glad you liked it. I felt pretty good about it when I was making it for you guys, um, but I just wanted to make sure that you thought the same too. Okay, so now that we have my new compass <laughs> all cut out, this is all ready to go. We'll go ahead and place everything on the can cooler. So in case you guys have never worked with StarCraft Softlex before, this light gold is StarCraft Softlex, and it actually applies at a temperature of 285 degrees for 10 seconds. So it doesn't quite apply as long as electric HTV. So we'll go ahead and tack the electric at 305, and then we'll actually bump the Cricut Easy Press down to 285 for the Softlex. So I think that looks pretty straight. What do you guys think? Does it look okay? Crafty Mom and Jay said, talking about your computer plan, you just remind me of my daughter's teachers on Zoom. The older teachers are always like, how do I show you my screen? Can you see it now? <laughs> It's really hard to do, honestly. That is one of the most difficult pieces about live streaming is trying to figure out the technology, at least for me. And I really love Switcher Studio. Um, it's pricey, I'm not gonna lie to you. It's kind of expensive, but I really like it because it's just so easy to use um, compared to other programs that I've used before. There are free ones out there and they do a great job, but I really like Switcher Studio just because the ease of use. <laughs> So I'll take easy, even if it costs me money, but that's just how I am. Bug Queen said, my son did a bunch of can coolers for Christmas, such an easy and fun craft. I have a couple slim can coolers to do. Yes, it's such a fun one, it is so easy. Especially if you guys are new to HTV, this is a great way to get acquainted. Lynn said, I loved it, already ordered more coolers, wine bags and wine stoppers. Oh good, I'm so glad Lynn. Like I get so excited to know that you guys loved this mystery box as much as I did. I was so excited putting it together, but uh oh, my mystery box is turning off on me. <laughs> or my mystery box, listen to me. <laughs> My easy press is turning off because I haven't used it. If you guys ever hear your easy press do that, just press the power button and it goes away. All right, so we're talking for just five seconds. Okay, so I put that off to the side. I'm gonna go ahead and peel off my carrier sheet. And then I'm gonna bump my easy press down to 285 degrees at 10 seconds because that's what our StarCraft Softlex requires. So I'm gonna go down in temperature even more. And then I'm gonna go down in time a little bit as well. All right, so we'll give that a moment to cool down. Oh, thanks, Irma. She said, show Alex some love and hit that thumbs up under the video, everyone. I would love it if you guys did that. That is super helpful for creators like me. So thank you, Irma, for that sweet plug. I'm just cutting some of the strings off of my Teflon sheet. I was telling you guys that it looks perfect, but it does have some little strings coming off the side. But that's okay. That doesn't really affect the way that it works, though. And I love this little sheet. It's perfect. I'm sure you could order some from Amazon. Super easy. Um, 143 Vinyl does carry some of the larger Teflon sheets, but that's the kind of stuff I use with my, with my heat press. Um, so if you want a smaller one, I'm sure you could order it, or you could cut up a Teflon sheet that you already have if you need to. So I'm gonna stick my compass down here. I'm gonna try to get it, make sure it's perpendicular to my design, since that's typically how it would be anyway. I can't wait to show you guys the um, look of this up close because it's so pretty. I absolutely love it. And I can show you the difference between like the pearly kind of electric sheen versus like the light gold sheen. It's gonna be really cool. I just love it. Actually, I might move it down just a hair. Okay guys, what do you think? Looks good? 
I think that looks pretty good. And see, that way we were able to take up more of the space this way, and we just have a little here and a little here left over. Um, another tip if you're making can coolers, this little flap at the bottom is what's gonna go underneath the can. So you don't typically wanna go too far to, toward the bottom of the edge because that's typically gonna go underneath the can a little bit depending on the size. So if I were you, I would um, not ever do anything really below like here just to make sure that everything shows up well on the can. It's slowly dropping in temperature, guys. I promise, we're close. <laughs> but yes, if you guys are new to HTV or layering or any of that stuff, I definitely think that can coolers are a great way to um, practice with that, especially if you're nervous about messing up stuff like t-shirts. I know a lot of the can coolers on 143 Vinyl's website are like, are like a dollar, 75 cents, something like that. So they're a super reasonable price if you wanna get some practice in with your HTV without actually using a full shirt. All right. Oh, and if you guys, um, speaking of what Irma said, if you guys have not already subscribed to the DIY Alex YouTube channel, I would love it if you did. Um, that's really helpful for you guys because if you ring the bell after you subscribe, then you get notified every time that I either go live or post a new video. And I always post a new video every Friday. So that's why it's good to subscribe for you guys because you're able to get notifications straight from YouTube so that you don't miss any videos. And it also helps me because it lets me know how many people I have watching my videos. So we'll go ahead and cover both pieces with a Teflon sheet. We'll go ahead and press at 285 for 10 seconds, and then we are all done. Nice and easy. And you don't, of course, have to do both sides of the can cooler. I wanted to, because I wanted to show you guys some different um, HTV types and stuff like that, but you certainly don't have to do both sides if you don't want to. All right, you guys, we are all finished. Check out these pretty designs. I just love these. Ooh, Katie said, I just got the pink box today. Yay! You know what? I helped, um, or at least I know what was in Sydney's box because I helped Sydney put it together before I left 143 Vinyl. And y'all, the pretty and pink box was really, really cute. Like, I don't know if there will ever be a mystery box that I don't love, but honestly, I was a part of the pink mystery box and it was super, super cute. So here is the one side of our can cooler and it says life was meant for good friends and great adventures along with the soft flex. So I'm gonna try to turn it in the light and show you guys the difference between the finishes. So again, this is the electric spearmint up here at the top. And then this is the Starcraft soft flex. So as I move it in the light, you can see that it definitely has a different sheen. The um, matte soft flex still has a really pretty metallic finish, but because it's not glossy, it's not quite as obvious. But you guys, it is gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. And then if we flip it back over to the other side, this side says Adventure Bound, and it's got the Spearmint Electric HTV along with the Champagne Glitter that you all know is my absolute favorite. So this stuff is just gorgeous together, and you always wanna pick contrasting colors that's never gonna do, um, that's never gonna disappoint you if you always pick colors that contrast. That's why I picked a dark can cooler, because the entire time I knew we were gonna use this color scheme, I had no idea what the design was gonna be, but I knew that I wanted to use this color scheme. Denise said, I did 30 can coolers for my husband's retirement party. Good for you, Denise. And this is a good one you can make a lot of. It's really, really easy. It doesn't take up a bunch of HTV. It's just really, really a great project. So super, super fun. So I'll give you guys another couple of moments to ask questions and anything else that you've got for me, and then I'm gonna head out of here. This was a pretty easy live. Thanks, Irma. Thank you, thank you. So I'll, I'll, how about we show it to you with the can in there, if I can do this without spilling my drink. <laughs> I don't want to spill my drink on the camera because that would be sad. But if I can wiggle this in here, I can show you guys what it looks like. What color sheet do I have on? Oh, that's a good question. It is the snowflake one. <laughs> I can't remember what the name is called, but I'll show it to you guys up close. It's a little bit old at this point now, but it's the one with snowflakes. And it's like I've had it on for two weeks. So it looks pretty good for two weeks. Like you can see around the edges of my nails and stuff, it starts to peel away. But I love Color Street Nails. If you guys haven't heard of Color Street, um, they do these fun nail strips that are already designed for you. And I love that because I'm really bad at doing my nails. <laughs> so 
Uh, you're welcome, Bug Queen. What's next? So next on Thursday at two o'clock, we are going to be making the 30 ounce white tumbler. So we're just gonna be decorating that with vinyl and we're gonna be using some Starcraft magic. So I'm super excited for that. Um, and it'll be really fun. Irma said, will a smaller water bottle fit in that can cooler? I don't think so, Irma, but I think it would probably fit in the regular can coolers. Um, I don't think it would fit in the skinny, but the traditional can coolers would probably fit a small water bottle. Thanks, Tammy. So here's one last, ooh, look at that shine. Look at that. I can't get it in there without spilling my water, guys. I don't want to do that. So I'll just show it to you all around. Look how pretty in the light this is. Ah, oh, so pretty. Just love it. So thank you guys so much for joining me and hanging out. If you haven't already subscribed to DIY Alex, like I said, it is super helpful for me if you subscribe, but it's also helpful for you too, because then you get notifications every time that I either go live or post a new video. So I'd love it if you did that. Give it a big thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, and I will see you guys.